During the winter of 1864, Abraham Lincoln's cabinet would approve of an ambitious raid on the city of Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. The plan, one concocted by General Judson Kilpatrick, would involve leading a force of cavalry from Washington, D.C., in two columns, which would converge on the city of Richmond. The main purpose behind the raid would involve freeing the prisoners of war held at Belle Isle, situated on the James River. However, there were other, ulterior plans involved with this raid, which were kept under wraps for the time being. With the plan approved, Kilpatrick would set out with his cavalry in late February 1864. The bulk of his cavalry would remain under his command, while a force split off from his cavalry would be placed under the command of Colonel Odrick Dahlgren, the son of Rear Admiral John Adolphus Dahlgren. Colonel Dahlgren would lead a force of 400 men across the James, west of the city of Richmond, and would attack Richmond from the south specifically with the goal of reaching the POW camp on Belle Isle. Kilpatrick, meanwhile, would move on to Richmond from the north, following the course of modern-day Brook Road. After inspiring the men under his command, Colonel Dahlgren would set forth with the plan. He eventually enlisted the assistance of Martin Robinson, a black man, as a guide in order to find a place to ford the James River. Eventually, Robinson would lead them to Dover Mills, and a fort that would cross the James River. However, the fort had been rendered impossible to cross, as the James River had swollen up due to recent bad weather. Thinking that the black man had misled them, Dahlgren's men would kill the man by hanging him from a tree. With their attempted at crossing being foiled, Dahlgren's men would turn eastward, moving towards Goochling County, it would stop at Sabo Hill, specifically at the residence of Confederate Secretary of War James Seddon. Seddon's wife, Sally Bruce, ended up inviting Colonel Dahlgren into her residence and showed off her hospitality. Miss Seddon happened to be the former girlfriend of Colonel Dahlgren's father prior to the war, and ended up treating the young Dahlgren as a guest providing for him and his men wine and other foodstuffs. While Colonel Dahlgren was enjoying some wine with Miss Seddon, the city of Richmond had been alerted of the cavalry forces approaching the city. Henry A. Wise, former governor of Virginia and general of the Virginia State Militia, and Plummer Hobson, Wise's son-in-law, had begun to mobilize the militia, which promptly marched westward towards the Federal Cavalry. On March 1st, 1864, in the midst of a winter storm that brought freezing rain and sleet, Dahlgren's force had left Sabo Hill, advanced onto Short Pump, and had begun moving down Three Chopped Road. It was here that Dahlgren's men would be met with the hastily raised militia of the city of Richmond in two clashes. The skirmishing began nearby Boatswick Lane, nearby the modern-day University of Richmond campus, and would continue along the length of Three Chopped Road. Dahlgren's force had been able to deal with the initial skirmishing force, but was soon met with another force on the Western Plank Road, five miles west of Capitol Square. After an initial assault by Dahlgren's men, they were soon forced to retreat, believing they were facing a far superior military force. Towards the north of Richmond, Kilpatrick's force of cavalry had met much the same resistance. They, too, would be forced to withdraw. Kilpatrick would be able to return to safety, but Ulrich Dahlgren would not be as fortunate. On March 2nd, in King and Queen County, Ulrich Dahlgren's force would be ambushed. There, Ulrich Dahlgren would be killed. He was 21 years old at the time of his death. Upon the successful ambush of Dahlgren's force, the Confederates would find some orders on Dahlgren's body, which included the secret ulterior motives for the raid. 
the orders found on Dahlgren stated the following. We hope to release the prisoners from Bell Island first, and having seen them fairly started, we will cross the James River into Richmond, destroying the bridges after us, and exhorting the released prisoners to destroy and burn the hateful city. And do not allow the rebel leader Davis and his traitorous crew to escape. The orders go into further detail concerning how the operation would be conducted, including the destruction of the Kennewa Canal, as well as the destruction of any mills within the city. However, one of the key details written elaborates on what is to be done with the Confederate leadership. The bridges, once secured, and the prisoners loose and over the river, the bridges will be secured and the city destroyed. The men must keep together and well in hand, and once in the city, it must be destroyed and Jeff Davis and Cabinet killed. These orders, which had been published by the city's newspapers, had caused public outrage in the city. Dahlgren, who had been buried near where he fell, had been exhumed and his body displayed for the public. His wooden prosthetic leg had been taken from his body, and his finger was severed from his hand in order to pry away a ring he wore. His remains would eventually be reinterred here at Oakwood Cemetery in an unmarked grave. Elizabeth Van Liu, a Union spy operating in the city, used her political connections to have his remains secretly exhumed and reinterred ten miles outside of the city to prevent any further desecration of his remains. After the war, Dahlgren's remains would be exhumed one final time, and would be finally reburied in Laurel Hill Cemetery in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in October of 1865. In the end, the Dahlgren affair, as it would be known, would be overshadowed by the events that would take place later on in 1864, becoming obscured by the bloody nature of the Overland Campaign and the long, grueling siege of Petersburg. This pivotal affair, an act that could have ended the war early, is now largely forgotten by the wider public. But to those who study the war, it is one of the most important incidents of the American Civil War.